What's up everyone? So in this video I'm going to be talking about just a couple of finer points about exponents. So this case here, um, when you have a negative number that is squared, what's the difference between this? And then also just zero exponents. If you've never watched my videos before, I highly recommend that you pause and try the examples when prompted. There are always free guided notes available at divideandconquermath.com. So let's talk about this first. Um, so this negative five squared versus negative five squared, what is the difference? So the difference actually comes down to the order of operations. So there's, there's a property that basically says this. So if you have a negative number, so any negative number, so I'm just gonna write negative A, and A can be whatever number you want. Um, we actually know in the back of our mind although I think a lot of people forget this or maybe don't even know this, but we think of that negative number as this operation here. So any negative number we think of as negative one times that number. Make sense? So this actually matters then for when we talk about how to evaluate this versus this. And if you think about this from the standpoint of the order of operations, it makes a lot of sense. So if I think about negative five squared, if I realize that this property is kind of buried in this, then this is actually the, the problem negative one times five squared. Okay. And then think about the order of operations. Exponents come first, which would mean that I evaluate five squared first. So this is really then negative one times 25. So the final answer here will be negative 25. Now, Let's compare that to negative five squared. How is this different? Well, again, if we think about the order of operations, so we have to do the parentheses first, which means that I cannot now break up negative one times five. This actually has to, to come first. So I could rewrite this whole thing then as taking negative five times negative five. That's, that's kind of what it means to, to draw out the exponent. And think about this then. This is a negative times a negative. So what ends up happening, this is positive. 25. So you've got negative 25 versus positive 25. That is kind of a, a big difference. So I want to think about this now in a couple different problems. So if I think about this example here, so I've got negative 3 squared. So this is in parentheses. So this is going to be that case then where this will be negative 3 times negative 3. So negative times the negative is positive, so that'll be positive 9. Now let's compare that to negative 3 cubed. This will be, so if I write this all out, this is negative three times negative three times negative three. Okay, so let's go piece by piece here. Negative three times negative three is nine. So this is nine, but still times negative three. So this one equals negative 27. So I wanna point this out because sometimes people think, oh, if it has parentheses around it, then it's just gonna be positive. But that's not true, right? So it depends on if the exponent is either even or odd. If you have an even number of negative things being multiplied together, then the, the result is positive. If you have an odd number of negative things being multiplied together, then the result is negative. So you have to kind of think about this a little bit with parentheses. However, with example C here, so now this is that whole property of we, we in the back of our minds, we know that this is equal to this, right? And so then this is really just negative one times nine. So this answer is negative. So if you don't have parentheses and you have a negative here, this will actually always stay negative because you have this, this little operation, right? This is coming um, after the exponent. You only have to worry about, is it gonna be positive or negative if you have the parentheses? Okay, so with that in mind, I want you to pause the video here, try these three and then hit play when you're ready. Okay, so for D, so this one works like this, right? So three cubed is 27. So this is gonna be this negative one times 27. So this is equal to negative 27. Now, if you're wondering if you're in my class, do you have to always show all this work? You, you don't, you could just write negative 27, but if you struggle to remember why this works, I highly recommend just writing out the explanation for yourself. Okay, so for E, so again, the negative one is separate from the exponent. So this is really gonna be negative one times 49, so this is gonna equal something negative. So notice it didn't matter in this case if the, the exponent was positive, or, sorry, if the exponent was even or odd, right? Because it has no parentheses and a negative here, it's just automatically negative. Now finally, we have this one here. So this is in parentheses with an odd exponent and this is negative. So will this be positive or negative? 
So something negative multiplied together an odd number of times will ultimately be negative. So then what is 2 to the fifth? 2 to the fifth is 32, so this is going to equal negative 32. So you have to kind of think through all that. So what I want to do actually is I, I want to just take a second to now see if we, we've got the idea behind the sign down. I don't care what the final answer is. All I want to know with these is, is it positive or negative? So for this one, it's in parentheses, it's negative, it's got an um, odd exponent. So will the ultimate sign be a positive or a negative sign? This will be negative. Okay, now this next one, negative, but it's being multiplied an even number of times. So does this guarantee that it'll be positive or negative? If it's an even number in parentheses, this guarantees this will be positive. Okay, now what about this one? No parentheses with a negative and an odd exponent. So if you don't have parentheses, it doesn't matter what the exponent is. If there's a negative here, you're just guaranteed to be negative, okay? Now maybe what you wanna do here is pause, think through these, and then hit play when you think you've got it. Okay, so this one, negative, and an even exponent in parentheses, this will end up being positive. Now this one doesn't matter that what that exponent is, there's no parentheses, so this is just automatically gonna be negative. Now for this last one, we've got parentheses, the negative, and then this is an odd exponent, so this guarantees this will be negative. So hopefully that kind of helps you think through it a little bit. So I have one other note I wanna make about zero exponents. So just if you have any real number a, um, we have this property that anything to the zero power, so a to the zero, this always equals one. So if you have something like five to the zero, that will equal one. Or if you wanna get more theoretical and just have like an x to the zero, that will equal one. And it doesn't matter how big the number is, if you have something like 35 to the zero, that will still equal one. So hopefully that, that idea kind of rings, make, makes sense. Now what about if I have negative six to the zero? What is this gonna be? This is gonna be negative one, right? Because this is technically back to that negative one thing. So you've got negative one times six to the zero. Six to the zero is one, so this whole thing actually equals something negative. Okay, so I want you to pause the video here and just try these and then hit play when you're ready. So for E here, this is in parentheses, so even though it's a negative number, because it's in parentheses, it just all gets wiped out by that, that zero exponent, so the whole thing equals one. When it doesn't have parentheses, then it would be negative one. Now for this one, three to the zero is one, and seven to the zero is one, so this is really one plus one, so this equals two. Okay, now for G here, thinking about this, so remember, this is negative five to the zero. This whole thing is like that previous example we were still looking at. This will equal negative one, while two to the zero, two to the zero will just be one. And now finally, don't let this throw you off. It's this whole thing to the zero power. It, this, this exponent does not distribute. That's not a rule that we have. So it's just this whole thing to the zero power, this will still end up equaling one. And so that'll cover it for this video, guys. If you got any questions, feel free to drop me a comment. Uh, if you leave me a like or you subscribe, I super appreciate it. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.